Greetings, friends, and welcome to Beast Foundry. My name is Christian, and as usual, I will be your guide today. Now today, I'd love to talk to you guys about one of our custom creatures, which was featured in our previous segment on Delionis Journal, the Hopper. The Hopper is a creature that I created a very long time ago. It was a drawing of something I did during high school that I really enjoyed, and it turned it into a DD and d creature, and it has been with me ever since. And now here we are in Pathfinder 2E some 30 years later, and it's still kicking, wandering around, doing its thing, eating adventures. So I particularly enjoy this monster. So I'd like to go over with you and show you how we do things because we do our stat blocks slightly different than what you might be used to when you're looking at a monster from Paizo out of the bestiary. So as you see here, we have the name, we have the basic description, uh, very similar to what you see. Uh, now over here to your right side of the paper, we have the name. We, instead of listing everything as a creature, which is a bit redundant, why does everything have to be a creature? We put the type of creature here. So this is an animal challenge rating five. Then we have the alignment, the size, and just basically all of your very generic information. It's perception, skills, stats, and then any kind of reaction actions that it might have. And we have the combat description over here off to the side, which kind of describes to you how this creature would behave in combat. Now, as you can clearly see, we have the creature and around each part of the creature, you see the various types of attacks that it has. So at its tail, you see that there is a tail, plus 15 to hit, melee, one action, agile trip, 2d6 plus six piercing damage. So most of these things are all very self-explanatory. They're just laid out in a different format than one you might see from Paizo. Paizo is very linear and it's done in a very list-like fashion. Uh, for Beast Foundry, I really wanted to do something that was a little more organic and fun to look at that helps draw your eye to what you want. You'll notice immediately that you're down under the creature, and this is how it is for every creature. You're going to see that AC, its defenses, fortitude, reflex, will, any resistances, weaknesses that it might have, immunities. You're going to see its speed and its hit points. And at each attack, you're going, or each part of the creature, its mouth, you're going to see its bite attack. And any special abilities that it might have, they're all going to be listed right here and spelled out to you exactly how they work. And if the creature has other options, such as for players, you can see here that this has animal companion stats. So when we look at it, there is the, it's a size small, it lists the attacks, just like you would any other normal animal companion. This is done just as kind of a, an additional flavor if you want to have more interaction with the world and want to use the things that are found here. Now, as I grew up mostly starting D&D in the, the real heyday of second edition, the second edition monster manual, the, our layout here is somewhat similar to that. And you'll find here at the bottom of the page, you see the ecology describing of how the monster interacts with the world. Now, our second page, things start to get a little more interesting. The first thing you're going to see for every monster is crafting information. And this is something that I love to do with my adventures, is when you find a creature, after you kill it, you can use that body to gather crafting components. Uh, something sort of similar to how Battlezoo operates, but this is something I've been doing for quite some time. You make either a check based on what type of creature it is, nature, society, a cult, religion, whatever the creature fits into. In this case, this is nature. So you would make a nature check. It's a DC 22 and all the way from critical success, success, failure, critical failure tells you how much value of crafting components you get. Now, this value is just set aside and it is purely used for crafting. It's not real like a, a sale value that you could sell stuff and get that money, you have this as kind of a freebie to make things. And the reason I did it this way is there's also a list of items that you can make that have to do with the creature itself. So for the hopper, we use items that have jumping or poison. So maybe a potion of leaping or a scroll of jump. 
boots of bounding, things like that. And so you can use that value in crafting components to put towards those items. And that's a really fun way to remind the characters of where they have come during their adventures. Because if they fight you know, a bunch of winter wolves and they're able to harvest pieces from the winter wolves, get some good value, and they might make some cold items or add cold damage to their weapon because that's something they could do because they have the value. And it, it's a good story component of why they have these things. There's also going to be information so you can summon the creature, what summoning spells they would work for, and what level you summon them at. So we like to really try to keep you... The monsters don't have just information for your DM. There is a lot of player information here as well. As you can see on this page, there's also several items listed. And the Hopper Venom, Hopper Boots, and the Hopper Whip. Now, most normal creatures, I try to give them a special mundane weapon that can be crafted from their body. It's just something I like to do. It doesn't work with everything, but most things I try to do it with. So for instance, the hopper, I kind of, you know, they have that whip like tail. So I thought that would be a fun thing to do. These are all treated as martial weapons because I wanted people to be able to use them. They're not strong enough to be advanced weapons. They are uncommon, but they still fall into that martial category. So anyone who is decent with weapons will be able to use them. And then the rest of the page is just more information of how these creatures interact with the world. So as we look over here at the Hopper Venom, you can see the price is 18 gold pieces. So if you got a successful crafting check just off of one Hopper, one successful crafting check is 21 gold pieces. You can use that value and you can create Hopper Venom because it's kind of simulating you harvested the resources. So it's all baked into the system of where, oh, a character's, oh, I want to try to extract the venom, this is how this works. It takes some realistic components, boils it down into very simple mechanics of here is the value, you make the check, done. If you have the proper feats, you can then craft these items. If you have alchemical crafting, you can make the poison. If you have magical crafting, you can create the boots. So all pretty simple stuff here. So with the hopper boots here, you can, they give you a plus two bonus to your athletics checks for jumping. So if you're doing a high jump or a long jump, you'll get that bonus. They also have have a single action that once per day you can cast a first level jump spell. The higher level hopper boots at level nine, that jump spell is heightened to level three. So that way you can jump for a minute with all of your actions. So it's just kind of a fun little item that allows you to kind of simulate how the creature operates. So I really didn't want to go into crazy detail. I just wanted to make this video and explain how the monster sheets work so that you guys can have a look at them. And all of these creatures that we cover are available on our Patreon. Uh, everything, all of the items I am converting over to use off of the Path Builder app. That is a feature that is now available that you can create custom equipment. So all of these things you will find there. So if you become a Patreon member that you be able to go to its page. You can download that file, upload it into your Path Builder app, and from there you will have all of this equipment available to you. That's about all I have for you today, so I really hope you enjoyed this, and as always, if you did, please go ahead, give us a like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. And until then, game well, my friends.